In this video, we will continue with our account verification functionality and additionally, we will enable asynchronous processing in our application. Now inside the auth controller, let's create an endpoint which contains a get mapping with value as account verification followed by token which acts as a path variable. Now let's create a method which returns a response entity of type string with name as verify account and as we are passing the token as the parameter inside the URL, we have to add path variable annotation to grab the token. And now inside the method, let's call auth service. And this time we call the method verify account and pass in the token to this method. Of course, this method does not exist yet. So let's also create it. So here we have to query the verification token repository by token which we receive as input to the method. So here let's type verification token repository dot find by token and pass the token as input. Of course, this method definition does not exist in our repository. So let's create it. And this find by token method should return an optional of verification token entity. So back inside the verify account method, let's store this written type into a variable. And as we are returning an optional here, in case if the entity does not exist, we can call the or else throw method and throw the custom exception with message as invalid token. All right, now we have to query the corresponding user who is associated with this token and enable that user. For that, let's create a method with name fetch user and enable, which takes verification token as input. And inside this method, let's get the username by typing verification token dot get user dot get username and store this written type inside a string variable called username. Now let's type user repository dot find by username and pass in the username as input. Let's also create this method inside the user repository and this returns an optional of type user. Now let's also call the or else throw method and to this method, let's pass in the supplier which throws our custom spring reddit exception with message as user not found with name. And we will append the username to the end. So now let's store this result inside the variable user and let's enable this user by typing user dot set enabled as true. Lastly, save the user inside the database and mark the method as transactional. Now let's go back to our auth controller and let's return a response entity back to the client by typing written new response entity. Let's pass in the first argument as message account activated successfully. And the second argument would be HTTP status dot okay. Okay, now it's time to test the user verification. Let's start the server register with a new user and test the verification process. Okay, so you can see that we received the response account activated successfully as expected. Now, if we observe carefully, an interesting thing is our API call to register users took more than 10 seconds to complete. That means a user has to wait for 10 seconds after he clicked on the sign up button in the UI. This is because we are sending a verification email after storing the user inside the database. These kind of operations are very expensive and takes the time to complete. So as we are uh, contacting an external mail server, so of course uh, there will be delay and uh, this response will be slow. What we should do in this case is to execute the code which sends the verification email asynchronously by running this part in a different thread. Uh, if you're not aware of what is asynchronous processing, I suggest you to Google about it. I will also provide a link in the description to know more about this. But uh, so fortunately in Spring, um, running this piece of code asynchronously is not complicated. Spring Framework provides us with the asynchronous capabilities, which we can use whenever we required. To enable that, we have to go to our application class and on top of the class, just type at enable async. This should already enable the asynchronous processing through. And now let's go to the piece of code, which is uh, responsible to send the email. That would be the send email method. 
inside the mail service class and on top of this method type at async. So that is it. Now our code should run asynchronously and the response time for registry users API call should be much uh, faster. So let's restart our server and test it again. So as you can see, the API call is taking very less time and looks far better than the previous response time. This is the advantage with asynchronous processing. Any time taking, any time taking task can be executed asynchronously. So these long running responses won't affect the user experience. An alternative way to do this is to use message queues like ActiveMQ or RabbitMQ. But this, these are too heavyweight for our use case, right? We don't have, um, we don't need to provide reliability to the uh, emails, but you want to put it, uh, we, want, we want to keep it simple. So, but if you are using this email sending functionality on a larger scale, uh, using this RabbitMQ or ActiveMQ would be uh, recommended. So that is it for this video. In the next video, we will see how to implement login functionality using JSON Web Tokens. So I will see you in that next video. Until then, happy coding.